everyone, Alan here. I hope you're okay. Um, thanks for coming along to join me. I've got quite a variety of things to chat about today, but I'm not talking about any of my knitting, crochet or sewing projects today, but a few other things. So I'm going to, I'm going to update you on the latest leaves in my 100 day project. I'm going to read you a new poem that I've written. I'm going to give you a couple of book recommendations. We're going to go for a little walk and finally I'm going to do a bit of painting. So <laughs> sit back and relax and uh, I shall chat away to you about all these different things. So my 100 day project is nearly at an end. So as I record this today, I'm up to day 89. So just another 12 leaves to go. Or is that 11? Oh yeah, I can't count, can I? <laughs> 11 leaves to go. Um, so uh, yes, so very soon I'll be able to show you the whole 100 leaves. I haven't quite decided still how I'm going to display them, but I have a reasonably good idea now. And I think it's uh, I'm going to be combining one or two ideas that other people have given me that you might have given me in the comments if you suggested something, sort of combining a few things. I'm, I'm still working on it, but I'll let you know as soon as I've decided. So yeah, anyway, so the last seven days of leaves, I'm gonna just chat to you a bit about now. So starting with day 83, and day for a day 83, I did a bit of embroidery, and embroidery isn't one of my skills that I regularly practise. But I happened to watch a YouTube video which was all about how to embroider different leaf shapes using different stitches and I like the look of fishbone stitch and so this is the leaf that I produced from that. I was reasonably pleased with the, with the end result. Uh, for day 84, uh, it's another wordy one, and decided to draw a compound leaf and uh, eat write the words for leaf in different languages. just find it really fascinating. You can see where most of the words come from, but they're not, you know, there's similarities, but uh, not often a similarity to the English word leaf. So that's very interesting. On day 85, oh, I tried something new for day 85. I bought a little bit of scraper board and just had a go at scratching uh, my, scratching a leaf shape. I had a, a couple of goes uh, leaves and I didn't really like them so I decided to stick with my third effort here and I quite like the finished result. Uh, day 86 I did a little drawing of a fairy sleeping on a leaf and uh, I, I kind of had a picture of this in my head as I was drifting off to sleep one night and when I woke up in the morning I decided to draw what I had seen in my head and also a quote came to me as well amidst the leaves the fairies sleep and I don't think it is a quote from anybody it's almost something that Shakespeare could have said but I don't think he did I didn't find anybody owning that quote <laughs> Anyway, I love this one, I really do. Um, then for day 87, I realised that I hadn't actually done any little books about um, identifying leaves. So I thought I'd make this little leaf shaped book about some of the trees I see most frequently near me when I go out for walks. And the thing I found most fascinating actually was uh, the Latin names. Well, they were really good. And at day 88, I crocheted this one. And it's a fern leaf and a free pattern that I got from the lovely Lucy from Attic 24. I used Drops Alpaca 4 ply. I like the slightly fluffiness, uh, fluffy texture, I mean, of this, of that yarn. I used just a two millimeter crochet hook so that it was so it was a reasonably small leaf. And then for day 89, well, I had a lovely surprise uh, one morning in the post a couple of days ago. 
um, uh, from my uncle Alan, who lives in Australia. And he sent me the most beautiful collection of Australian leaves, uh, which are pressed and dried. And he just said they, they were just to give me inspiration. And he was really pleased to know that, that they had actually arrived uh, before the end of my project. Uh, so thank you so much to Uncle Alan and Francis for sending them to me. I really love them. So I decided with a little bit of trepidation to use one of the leaves to paint on one of the gum leaves and tried to uh, imitate some Aboriginal dotty art using acrylic paint and a, a bamboo skewer. So yeah, so... There we are, that's another seven leaves made and 11 to go. <laughs> so yes, and I think tomorrow's leaf uh, is going to be uh, the, a little bit of poetry again because I've written a, a new poem. Uh, and I think I was saying a couple of episodes ago that um, that when I look through the leaves that I've done so far, each one of them kind of has its own little story to it. And, and I said that if I if I told you the story of each one, it would be a very, very long episode. Maybe I can incorporate that um, at some point in some way. But, um, and, and one morning when I was out on my walk uh, and sitting on a bench contemplating, you'll not be surprised to know, leaves, uh, I was thinking how, each leaf around us is unique and if it could tell its story it would have its own uh, particular story to tell and so I started forming some words and I've written them down into a poem but I also have uh, combined my thoughts about the leaves that I've created so the poem is in two halves the first part is about the leaves we see in nature and the second half is about the leaves I've created and how they say something about me. They, they say lots of things about me. And how when when all hundred leaves are together, that'll be a real really visual representation of me. <laughs> um, so I hope you're gonna enjoy uh, listening and reading the words of my new poem, which unusually for me is not a rhyming one. They were just thoughts that I was putting down. So here's my poem. Every Leaf by Helen Ketteridge Every leaf in nature unique with its own story Its time on earth bursting with vigour A full-bodied life touched by rain, sun, wind and snow Offering nature's inborn art and melody Every leaf, if it could speak, could tell its own tale Enriched by passing time suffered wounds, nibbled and gnawed, supplied safe shelter, secluded shade, seen tiny eggs, new life emerged. Every leaf, another piece in nature's universe, telling of its vital part, past, present and future woven together, thousands of fragments that fill our souls with joy. Every leaf that I create, unique with its own story, facets of a full and varied life, a gathering of childhood pastimes, engaging skills, some old, some new, blending a love of nature, art, music and words. Every leaf, if it could speak, could tell its own tale, enriched by past, present and future, a little essay of my life, people, Places, lessons learned, words and feelings bound together. Every leaf, another piece in the jigsaw of my being, telling me who I am, where I've come from and where I might go. One hundred little fragments of my very soul. Okay, so I've got a couple of book recommendations for you now, which are nothing to do with leaves, um, but they are non-fiction books and they are very, very relevant to me, as you'll see. 
So uh, the first one is a book called Rain by Melissa Harrison. And I think one or two of you have told me that you've already read this one. So I hope you'll agree with me that uh, it's worth recommending. And it's pertinent to me and I'm mentioning it to you because, oh, quite a few weeks ago, I was saying how I was trying to have a different attitude to going out in the rain. Because sometimes I could be put off, I could look out the window and think, no, I'll not go for a walk today because it's horrible and wet and rainy. Well, I decided to change my attitude to that and go out anyway and see the positive side of the rain. And so this little book is uh, uh, re really caught my attention uh, when I saw that. And the other book that I'm re recommending is called The Joy Journal, for gr The Joy Journal for Grown Ups by Laura Brand. And it's not actually a journal that you fill in. It's not a notebook. Um, um, but it's absolutely perfect for me and perfect for anybody who uh, likes uh, being creative. But I'm going to chat about these a little bit more and show you inside the books. So let's have a look in the books. So this is the book called Rain by Melissa Harrison. And it's basically divided into four chapters. She goes on four walks in different places in England and... I think purposely has looked at the weather forecast and gone out in the rain, but in different kinds of rain. And yeah, so here, ooh, where are the chapters? Here's the chapters. Yeah, she goes for walks in January. You can see that April, August, and October, four different places. And one fun thing that I really liked was this at the end, this section on a hundred words that are something to do with rain. So that's really lovely. And yeah, and I just wanted to read a couple of little sections from this um, where she's just really trying to appreciate all kinds of weather. She says it keeps us in our place somehow, reminds us that we are still part of the natural world and not above it. Nobody wants rain on their wedding day and the damage wrought by storms and flooding can be terrible but imagine a world where the weather had been regulated and tamed, where nothing inconvenient ever happened and our activities were never curtailed. So, yeah, she's just making us sort of think about it and just appreciate it. And then here in the, in the epilogue. My year of getting wet and thinking about and reading about rain has broadened and deepened my feeling for the outside world. I'm no longer just a fair-weather walker. I can now choose to overcome the impulse for comfort and convenience that insulates us, not only from the bad in life, but from much of the good. I think we need the weather in all its forms to feel fully human, which is to say an animal. It's under our skin, not just psychologically, but physiologically too. And this is the Joy Journal for Grown Ups by Laura Brand and it is just a most beautiful book. You can tell that when you see the end papers, I think that always says a lot about a book, doesn't it? And this book is just right up my street and right up your street as well if you just want to dip into all sorts of different craft activities, a huge variety in here. I just want to read you a couple of things from here. Um, I used to think the term creativity only applied to artists or inventors and to the very greatest at that. That somehow it was a term used only when a masterpiece or life-changing piece of technology had been produced. It is now in adulthood that I know and embrace the fact that creativity is possible in almost everything we do and it's in all of us somewhere. And she goes on to say, creativity gives us the possibility of changing a fleeting idea into an actual physical thing. For some people this comes easily, for others it needs to be exercised regularly. And for many it may be deep, deep down and hidden beneath responsibility, fear, tiredness and overwhelm. The Joy Journal for Grown Ups will invite you to access that long lost, buried ability, as well as encouraging you to discover talents anew so that you can also seek joy and craft and connect with your creative self in everyday life. 
was absolutely perfect. Um, and then each chapter really is an invitation. So we've got an invitation to the self. So these are really activities meant to be stress relieving and calming. For example, grown up Play-Doh. <laughs> and uh, she also... Um, she also tries to use materials that you very likely will have around the house. You do need to buy one or two things, I think. Here's some paper, look. Yeah, so that's great. Um, and then there's an invitation to make things as gifts. And let's see, it's hard to give you a really good... Oh, an invitation to celebrate. So things that you might use as part of celebrations. Some crepe paper flowers there. Material tie garland. All sorts of things and lots of them I haven't tried before or I haven't tried for a long time. Some really, really super ideas here. Some lanterns there. And some party crackers. Now you've got an invitation to give, so a section on things that might be really nice, uh, you know, to give as gifts. And I think there's one more section, which is, it's an invitation to maybe think of getting together with other people, which obviously is something that we're beginning to be able to do again now. So a really, really super book highly recommend that and I know I'm going to get a lot of pleasure from it. Well shall we go out for a little walk now? Well, that would be nice wouldn't it? Uh, uh, the thing I'm enjoying most about my walks at the moment apart from the weather being a little bit milder uh, are the flowers. There are so many beautiful wild flowers and in that I include any of the flowers that might otherwise be called weeds. Poor old dandelions and things. I really feel sorry for them being called weeds. So I'm just calling them all wildflowers and I think I managed to get a bit of video of almost every flower that's out near me at the moment. And so it's May, it's May 2022 as I record this and I just feel like there's a profusion of flowers at the moment and the promise of more to come as well. So sit back and enjoy a little walk amongst the wildflowers. To finish with a flowery theme today because I decided to have a go at painting bluebells and uh, just as it happens as quite often happens this way uh, suddenly a new video tutorial popped up on YouTube 
on how to paint bluebells so I, I watched that and decided I would give it a go. I feel like I wasn't having a really good day with, with painting. I, I am still very much a beginner at using watercolour and one of the tricky things is, um, is having the right amount of paint or wetness on your brush and so if you're a bit of an expert you will see that at times that I either haven't got enough paint or I haven't, it's not really wet, my, my brush isn't wet enough or it's too wet. So I wasn't particularly happy with with what I did but I, I decided I would just share it anyway and and they, they you know they do look like bluebells. I just there was just a few things I wasn't really happy about. Uh, but I did still enjoy, I did still enjoy doing the painting and I hope that you'll enjoy just kind of the gentle feeling of watching, watching someone paint because that's something that I love to do. I watch other, other YouTube uh, channels where somebody's just sitting drawing or painting and I, I find it really relaxing. So, so I hope it's relaxing even if you're an expert at painting and you think oh dear there's a few mistakes there. Oh, it's terrible, isn't it? So we're so unkind to ourselves. We really, really must. I am trying. I am trying to praise myself for actually just having a go. You know, I'm like, I'm always, I'm always going on about it. Just have a go. Don't worry about it. So I have to apply that to myself as well, don't I? So come on then. Let's let's just sit and watch me paint some bluebells. Right then, it is time for me to go. So I will just thank you for being with me today and I look forward to you coming back another day. And until then, keep busy, look after yourself and I'll see you soon. Okay then, bye.